fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're going to show you how to catch some fish today. Last month, when we came to this Zach Slough, we immediately threw out a spinner bait. But today, you said, don't throw out a spinner bait. What do we use instead? Well, where we were this morning, we were throwing it in like one to two feet of water. And we we're throwing a chatterbait, because I'm going to throw something where I could go real fast, cast, reel in. You know, I don't have to let it sink or anything, just reel it in. <clears throat> and you can see the weed line over there, and the fish are actually looking into the tule, so you got to get it as close as you can to the bank. So basically, my first choice of bait this morning was a chatterbait, so I could cover more ground. Okay. So you're going to notice that we could be going down a bank, and I'll reach down and pick up another rod. It's basically because I look at, I, I keep telling you over and over, look ahead of the where you're fishing, so you can see the terrain that's coming up. So then what I did was I, came to a different area where there was more wood and then isolated wood. So then I picked up a cinco. So I'm still in shallow water. I'm still in probably two to two and a half, three feet of water. So I pick up this Texas style and I was pitching it into the wood piles and stuff like that. And I was catching quite a few fish with this. So basically I'm just picking up the gear where I know that the presentation that I'm putting in there is going to get the fish to bite. Oh, you got him! You got him! Yeah! Then when we came to tighter stuff and the stuff called penny wart, I picked up my um, flipping stick with a brush hog with a one ounce weight on there. And I'll pitch it into the trees, I'll pitch it into the penny wart. And you saw that one, I set the hook on it and the thing was thrashing all around. We couldn't get it. So, we just it's kind of a face. cluster because <laughs> I, we backed the boat into it, you know, like 15 feet into the penny wart, reached in and you could see his mouth just sitting there <laughs> and just grabbed him. Stuck. What you got, Alan? Big bass, but he's stuck in the... You still got him on? Sawing away. Is it? Wait, wait. See his face? No, I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see his face. See it? See it? Do you see his face right now? Yeah. The face only a mother can love. I got that puppy. Oh, he is there. Oh my god, he's very, very heavy. <laughs> My shoe was yeah, in the water. My foot's in the water. Let go. Are you sure you got him? <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> Holy moly, we're in the shit here. <laughs> it's a three it's a three man right. land. So it's just picking up the right bait for the presentation of the structure that I'm doing. So, I, of course, because it's tides, it's always, water's always moving slack, moving a little or moving a lot. Do you try to maintain a certain boat speed yeah. at all times? You always want to, whatever's greater, the current or the wind, you want to put your boat into it so you can control it. If you just went the way the wind was blowing or the current's pushing, you're going 100 miles an hour, you're going way too fast. I always said boat presentation is number one. So being able to put that boat in the right position and then make the proper casting, because it takes practice, 
he'll catch more fish. I have all, all our poles are set up the same way. We don't use floral, we don't use all, we don't use all mono. We don't use all floral. How do we always separate poles? And this type of wood and tulies where you can get hung up very, very easily, as oh, I have yeah. learned. You're good at this. <laughs> so basically, everything I have down here is braid. And it's probably 50 or 65. And then later in the summertime when I'm punching, I use 80. And then when the water's clear, I use an Alberto knot with a piece of 25 fluorocarbon. And I usually start out with about two feet. And then as I work today and cut it off, it gets a little shorter. But it doesn't matter, you know, as long as you have just a little bit, it'll help you catch more fish. And do you find that during the day of different parts of the tide, for example, the fish are more for example, in the morning, are they more in the grass, or they're more in the tules, or more in the rocks, or it doesn't matter? In this time of year, I found most of them to be more up in the tules. Mm -hmm. And then like the other day, we were out yesterday, you saw me move way up tight, and I get in like two feet of water, and I'm cruising around, and I look for the round circles with white rocks. That's a good indication that you know that them fish are already moving up, and they'll go in there and pan, and then as the weather changes, they'll move off of them but they stick around, they don't go far. And those fish are catchable. Yeah, and that means that they're, they're on the pre-spawn. They're getting ready. So, and they feed really heavy before they spawn to get their energy up. And the crawdads have the most protein. So they know that crawdads are, you know, will give them the most protein to get them strongest through the spawn. And it makes it nice for us anglers because when they get a crawdad, they chomp it down so you know when you got a bite. Correct. When they hit this brush hog, they thump it because they put it in their crusher. Alan, you mentioned the tide charts and how do you go about finding the tide and analyzing the tide chart itself? Mm, probably the most important tool that I have is on my phone. You go to the apps and you buy the one that says Tide app and it gives me the tides everywhere. You can look up anywhere you want, but they don't have them exactly. So like when I'm fishing Liberty, it doesn't show anything by Liberty. So you got to go the closest, which is Snug Harbor, and then Liberty's an hour later. So you just have to make the adjustments. How do you know it's an hour later? Because I watch for it, and <laughs> when the water starts going out, I know it changes. It's okay. an hour later. So from experience. Believe me, yes. Hour later. And you also recommended I do something when, when you start explaining the complexity of the tides that I should start to pattern what time and what the tide is when, and what time of the so, month. So every day the tide goes up and down twice. One's a big one, one's a small one, so less movement. So every other week you'll get, so like if you have one high tide like today and then you come next week, it'll be the lower one. In the morning. In the morning, yeah. So you have to make the adjustments. And it's right here, all on your phone. And you prefer the high tide in the a.m.? This time of year, yeah. high water uh, in the morning. Yeah. And I'm fishing the two weeks. And how long will you do that for? Until uh, I get 20 or 30. No. <laughs> <laughs> do you do this through the summer? Um, yeah, usually after they spawn, then they yeah. train. So pre-spawn, you remember, the fish are always up shallow. So in order to catch them when they go up and feed, they know that those fish live down here in Delta. Every day that tide goes up, up and down, up and down. Now I'm a firm believer that they move up when it's time. They'll feed and they drop back down and they don't go nowhere. They just sit there and wait. Then when the tide comes back up, they make their way up and feed again. Just like us, we don't eat every minute of the day. So very important the tides and knowing that it's pre-spawn and also knowing the tides is really important because you're not fishing the whole river the whole delta no i look for big flat big weedy areas and you, you don't you look for the ones that have the broken up weeds those are the best areas with tules they seem to be the best and once they spawn out then my outlook is totally different so denise <laughs> one of the things i recommend that you do and beginners do is go get a tide chart and a book, and every time you go out, write what happened that day. And then after you do it Skunk. for <laughs> after you do it for a few months, you're gonna see a pattern. So then you use it year to year, year after year, you use it. So then after a while, you know you won't need one. You can just go out and catch them. That's an awesome idea. You did that. As I a did kid. It a long time ago, probably. 50 years ago. And now you still remember every slew we go into. So if you like this sort of content, 
about um, really detailed information on how to find fish and especially how to break it down by the seasons, such as spring bass and the species. Please hit the like button so we know what kind of content you'd like to see. Hit the subscribe. It doesn't cost you a dime and it'll help my channel out greatly. If you go to the bottom, there's a little arrow. If you hit the description, you're gonna see all the tackle from the rods, reels, line, lures, hooks if I change them or whatever else I'm using in that video, it'll show you. And then you could hit the comment. If you want to ask me any kind of question, you can just hit the comment and ask me, and I'll usually get back to you within two or three days. Thank you for watching, and uh, look out for the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.